Aloha, I'm Christina Simpkins, your host, and welcome back to a whole new season of Hawaii's Real Stories. And on today's show, we're focusing on independent films dealing with music. Big Island filmmaker Jack Miller used his experience as a reggae aficionado to create a personal portrait in dreadlock rock. Seeing Bob Marley on stage with the Wailers was like another level of consciousness. Reggae music has been one of the most influential music in the last 50 years. Whether it's jazz, whether it's country, whether it's Hawaiian music, rock, punk, hip hop, have all been influenced by reggae. Dreadlock Rock, the documentary that I have just completed, is an insider story about these musicians. It's a journey that has been a 30-year experience for me, and the film begins back in the early 70s with the history of Jamaican pop music and comes all the way up to the present. The importance of this music cannot be underestimated. I have been passionate about it since the mid-70s when I started a surf reggae band in California called the Roots Band. Shortly thereafter, I went to Jamaica and worked with some of these reggae icons, including Sly and Robbie, Toots and the Maytals, and the Mighty Diamonds. Everyone knows Bob Marley and his music. Very few people know much about the story of the Jamaican culture, the Rastafarians, and the musicians who were the creators of this music, the struggles and the suffering that these people were experiencing. Uh, it incubated the message of, of hope, and it was a flower that blossomed in a pigsty. So this story, I feel, uh, is, is, in, is important because it's a universal message of rising above conditions. Calypso was always there first. From there now it developed to people start ching, 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 for ska, you know. And then for um, rock studies like ching, 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 for reggae now it's ching, 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 you know. So you have three different feel. We had this heap of footage that we shot over about a 35 year period. It was like taking a piece of wood and beginning to carve it and see what it was that we had. Where is the story? There's definitely been a distinct similarity between the early days of the California reggae scene and my experience here in Hawaii. Jack got this idea to put together this reggae band over here. And so we put together the Big Eye Band and started doing concerts in Kona and stuff. At that time, Marty Dredd came on the scene. He was a Maui reggae artist and also a DJ. He was instrumental in getting the music out on the airways. Every time you do a film, something serendipitous occurs that you weren't expecting. And in this case, Willie Nelson, unknown to us at the time that we were working on the film, met Marty Dredd. Marty Dredd and I had written a song called Take No Part, and Marty felt like Willie Nelson would be a great person to sing on this. And he just popped it out. We should do something together sometime. It was a piece of music that Jack had composed, and I went home and wrote what I thought him and I would both be able to say about the war in Iraq and about every war that's ever happened on this planet. They actually did a concert. Even though Dreadlock Rock does cover a large span of time from the early 70s up to the present, we didn't feel that this was about nostalgia. It's really about the vitality that reggae is very much alive, and not just coming out of Jamaica with Jamaican artists, but all over the world, uh, reggae has, has become an influence on those cultures. Hawaiian music, of course, has merged in a way, the island music, and uh, so we wanted people to see that it's, it's become an international music form. It started on this little island in the Caribbean, but it has gone on to become this world force. That was another thing about our film. Where do you end this story? Most of these artists that are in this 
film, continue to be making music, uh, traveling the world, and continuing to spread the music and the message of this music. And so it, it, it's an ongoing thing. I, I've always felt that this was a trilogy of sorts. And this is part one that introduces people to where the music came from and what the motivations were for it. Right now, with the world where it's at, if ever there was a need for music that brought a message of hope, of world citizenship, of equal rights and justice for all people. Reggae continues to carry that torch. It's a universal message, and it's one that people respond to. It's what inspired this film. It's what this film is based on, love, peace, and unity, and, and the power of love and the power of music to heal us and to make it a better world.